Prasanna, you had sent a question. Uh, yes. Uh, Are you okay and comfortable to share it? Because yeah, I think okay. many people would have the same question yes, at yes. some point in their lives. Yes. Yeah, I'm okay. so, I'll ask it. Okay, my question is uh, uh, I have basically uh, my profile is uh, uh, I'm single basically, and there are not many relatives other than my elder brother. And when I see his uh, this male, he will be 60 year old and he has a Parkinson's disease. I see him ailing, you know, and then I have seen him extremely fit. Mm. In young days, and when I see him, you know, uh, in this condition, you know, often a sort of fear comes into my mind actually of being left alone completely. Mm. Uh, until this moment, I never realized how his existence was supporting me. Mm. Although I am staying in Bangalore, he is in Bombay, far away. But in my mind, yes, my brother is there, yeah. he will call me in the morning. How are you, etc. Suppose if I'm not well, I will tell him something is happening. He will tell me, take this pill, etc. Everything will be okay. I never realized that some sort of support. Mm. And now when I see him, this, you know, in this condition, then suddenly the thought of being completely lonely, you know, that occupied my mind actually, and that literally gave me very very restless. Sure. It's time, you know, uh, I was I mean, it disturbed the sleep also. Mm. So. So that's what I, uh, my question is, you know, that in this situation, how do I sort out? Right. Because uh, uh, life is so, I mean, you know, as we see so many people ailing, you know, things are so difficult mm. to keep uh, going. Very so true. What to do, how to sort this out, you know, it makes me very restless. So he is your only sibling or you have? Yes, only sibling. Uh, and is he married? Married but divorced. No children? Uh, he has a daughter who recently married, but she has a disturbed marriage. She and she has that. Okay. So she is going through a trauma at this moment of time. Uh, not much of support to the family from her. Hmm. A lot of time of her brother goes in sorting out her issues, basically. Right. So, and uh, any parents around? Uh, no. He passed away in 1991, my father passed away in 2001, my passed away. How so, old was your father when he passed away? Uh, he was 56. That's quite young. Yeah. yeah. I am 51 now. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and your father was ailing or was it sudden passing? Uh, yeah, it was sudden. And mother? Mother was ailing. Hmm. She was and since when have you been living on your own? From what age? Uh, from uh, so 18 years, when I was 18 years or before that, I have been working hmm. and supporting family. I am the only source to my brother actually, economically. Because he doesn't earn from his, you know, he doesn't make You are supporting your elder brother? Yes. Who is ailing? Yes. yes. So, and since then I'm working. I've been shifting places. I was started my work in Bombay. Mm. Later on I shifted to Delhi, where I stayed for 10 years. And here in Bangalore I'm for the past 7 or 8 years. Mm. So I'm used to living alone or managing myself. Mm. But now I feel completely lonely. I mean, mm. maybe psychologically it makes me very lonely. Sure. So, it's very understandable. So that's how. So, I don't understand how to cope up with that. Yeah. That disturbs even my creativity, you know, because I am unable to make any composition. Mm. The real thought disturbs me. Yes. So, this is how I realize, you know, having a family means what, actually. Yes. You do not know about that. If suddenly everything is taken out, then you feel that whatever my success, whatever was there, all this of mine was made, supported by all these people. Yes. Invisibly. And such a gift it is because some people have not had that support from family, you see. Some people 
have lived independent of their family, no relationship as such, deep relationship with either siblings, parents. Some have not had siblings. They are single by birth as single children, I mean. So, you see, it is so natural. This fear of being lonely is a natural fear which arises. Because this is a presence that has been around since your birth. Elder brother has been around since your birth as a presence. So the first thing is not to fight the fear of loneliness. To acknowledge it is there. You know, there are some people on the path of Advaita and Jnana Yoga who say, oh, it means then if you're still attached, you know, it means you haven't really understood the teaching, etc, etc, etc. But my take is that we are living very human lives with relationships. With and family relationships are karmic relationships. Renanu Bandhan is very strong. And they have been with you since your birth. So the first step is that the fear is bound to arise. Why? Because there is the fear of loss. The fear of loss. What will happen once I lose my brother? And that is the fear of the unknown. So far the known has been the elder brother who's always been around making the phone call. Right? So one is resting in that comfort. Now the ego's fear is, when that is taken away from me, what will happen to me? Okay? Now, in your case, there is no financial dependency. Imagine if the situation was the other way around, that you depended on your elder brother for financial support. Can you imagine how multiplied the fear would be? Because then it is actually a fear of survival also. One is the fear of the emotional loss of a family member, brother, and then the battle for life which you don't have. So, there are already two gifts here. One is, you were fortunate to have a sibling who cared about you. And the other is, you are fortunate to be in a financial place where you don't depend on the sibling who is ailing. So, what arises is gratitude. What arises is gratitude first to this divine power, this divine force that, you know, I now see that you took care of me through my brother in some way to comfort me through the trials and tribulations of life for which I am grateful. Perhaps I took it for granted. Now when I am actually contemplating the loss of my elder brother, I now realize his value, something that has been with me. So one is first gratitude that I have been cared for by someone in life. Gratitude that I have been able to take care of him. What if I didn't earn the kind of money I earn? So, to create some space for gratitude first. This is not about shutting down the fear or destroying the fear or running away from the fear. We are just looking at this very objectively because it is a very real fear. So, one is gratitude. Two is generally what happens is, when we are children and a parent dies, if we are young when the parent dies, there is a hidden fear. The fear of loss is connected to the fear of survival, monetary survival I am saying. Supposing a breadwinner of the family dies, 
and they are young children. One is the loss which has happened. Two is where will the money come from. So the fear of survival is multiplied when there is a monetary issue in the equation. And this is a very important point because these issues get mixed up. See, the ego first wants to ensure survival. There is the psychological survival and there is the actual survival. Now, it becomes very complex when the fear of actual survival is also involved. When the fear of actual survival is taken away because God has made the situation comfortable, then we are talking of psychological survival. The fear of loss of what is mine, which is my brother in this case. What will I lose? What will I lose when my sibling passes away? The love I receive from the sibling. That is a fact. That fact cannot be escaped. The loss I will feel when someone who looked after me is no longer there to look after me. Now, when this loss is left on its own, grief will arise, it is bound to. But over that grief, there is no other story. It is just the loss of a loved one. Happiness will arise sometimes at some happy memory. Grief will arise when one misses them. But that is all happening in the moment. That is life. The fear, what will happen to me when the sibling is no more, that fear is the fear of psychological survival. Because you are still earning money. You are not physically dependent on anything. You are fully functioning. So, the fear is that that component of love that I received through one instrument of the divine is not there now. That is the fear. It's a very important point because many times I have seen that this gets mixed up with a money issue, which is thankfully not there in your case. Okay. Now, this psychological fear, what will happen to me? Will you die if your brother's love is not received? The fact is you won't, right? The fear is psychological. The me and my story is afraid now. The me and my story is afraid. There is no other thing to be afraid of. You see, that is the whole point. The me does not want to die psychologically. Supposing the universe told you, Prasanna, there are three people out there who need your attention, who need your love. And you find that now you become a channel to give love. You were receiving love from one channel called your brother. Now the universe says, look, now you have been released of that relationship. But why not for change be the giver of love to someone who needs it? Could be anyone. Could be a friend, could be an orphan, whatever it may be. So the universe says, now experience the other side of life. You see? And what about the other people in your life? You may be alone in terms of family not being there. But 
are there others in your circle friends if not friends teachers if not teachers anyone who you feel are fond of you who like to be in your company look at those relationships to enhance them because ultimately love is not personal love it has become personal because we have said this is my family this is me this belongs to me that is what the ego does and that is why ram krishna said when a mother asked ram krishna when will i get enlightened she had come with her child and ram krishna said when you treat every other mother's children as your own then you will be enlightened so far it is me and my child so when you start operating in a sense in a when i say non personal way i mean not me and mine i don't mean it's a cold kind of thing when you expand your horizon when you expand your scope when you see that it is the same consciousness in everyone then this label that this is my brother this is my sister this is my this thing that value of that label diminishes and you see that everyone is actually coming from that same love and there is then nothing to fear this is a process which one goes through and you your expressions of love will be different where you give it where you receive it you will still miss your sibling you will miss your sibling deeply because let's say 50 years of this incarnation has been in the presence of the sibling so there is no question of escaping that but accepting it understanding it allowing it that yes grief is going to arise then grieving fully not saying oh i should not be doing this i should not be doing that and you will find that the universe will support you through this process of learning this is all learning we have come here to lose everyone's journey is a journey of loss why because the journey of the ego as a separate me is to lose that sense of separation it is a journey of loss some lose objects and get upset some lose relationships everything is an object thoughts are objects certain patterns of thinking are objects when a new teaching comes in even that changes you lose your old patterns of thinking it is all loss so it is all a journey of loss and in your case your life situation has shown you a very important relationship where you see that in this relationship the person is ailing and now i am afraid i'm going to lose him so in that fear also there's a glimpse of the divine and everything has to be allowed even if this fear is amplified don't question it or say you should not be there why are you there don't talk to the fear like that allow its full expression and stand and witness it allowing means witnessing let it go to any scale i am going to witness it let sleepless nights come how many nights in your life have you slept well compared to that what are a few sleepless nights so why this compulsion i should not have sleepless nights why am i losing sleep part of life going through a phase okay allow it so this allowing this accepting removes the fight with the fear and you can say in that sense the fear is embraced that all right i see you i see you there you're making my life a bit difficult right now i'm questioning so many things 
okay allow it if tears come at night let them come if you feel a deep pain in your heart let it be there and part of you will be watching this in awareness witnessing it without the intention to step in to do something about it that is the main thing that ego which says what can i do to avoid this fear what can i do so that i have good sleep at night forget that one if you have 3 4 nights of restless sleep then you will really value the nights you had good sleep if you have only good sleep <laughs> there's no value to the good sleep you see so there is no way out of such fears except to face them not to try and push them down that is living the life courageous what to do there is no choice and everyone's journey is relative there are so many people drawn to this teaching where the parents have lost their child which is perhaps even harder to bear we won't know that because the normal cycle of life is of course that the parents move on first and then the children so different people are faced with different situations the gift of being on the spiritual journey is the grace that it brings to the situation the grace the understanding which is operating in the background that is a very big gift of the spiritual journey because either we suffer it unconsciously or we suffer it consciously and the spiritual journey helps us suffer consciously accepting the will of god not fighting it yes i accept these things happen in life we lose our loved ones we don't know what will we do without them that is being honest i don't know what i will do with my loved one without my loved one all right don't know we'll see what happens so the spiritual teaching comes and that is the grace operating in one's life think of the teaching like a mother taking care of its child explaining to the child guiding the child through life like the gentle embrace the warm embrace of a mother telling the child look 
this is what life and living is about but i am with you through this journey and you will find a lot of comfort in it and while the time is there enjoy it to the fullest share what you have to express gratitude for whatever you feel you would like to express gratitude for make the most of it because everything is temporary we ourselves are temporary so while he is there make the most of it you know shri aurobindo had said something very nice he said when we give a gift to someone on their birthday we think we are giving it to an individual i am giving a gift to divya i am giving a gift to gopal but it is the same consciousness functioning through everyone so next time you give a gift in awareness keep this in mind that you are not giving that gift to an individual you are giving it to consciousness can one have that degree of awareness that when one is gifting something to someone one is gifting it to the same consciousness that functions through everyone the one divine being that functions through everyone but we are always looking at this individual is giving that individual a gift and then you find that you are more and more generous with gifting even people you are not that close to because things open up that me and mine starts releasing then everyone is me and mine who can be not yours if consciousness is all there is who can be not yours everyone is yours if everything is consciousness that is why joel goldsmith would say you make yourself very proud that you pray for your loved ones but why not pray for your enemies because they are also an aspect of consciousness then we will see how deep the teaching is do you have the courage to pray for your enemies knowing that they are equal expressions of the same divine being that is the next step in prayer this is true for those people who have this complete non separation But those people who feel separateness, what they should do? It's so difficult to feel other person just as consciousness. But that is why some people are gravitating towards a teaching, and others are not. Others will continue living the life of separation. And those fortunate few who are drawn to the spiritual journey will relook at relationships, at situations with the new light of understanding. the others will be mired in the tennis match of life action and reaction blame and condemnation till the last breath so many people live their lives like that but when the spiritual journey draws you in that game that action reaction game is now given an opportunity to be looked at Experience that process. Can I call myself as selfish in that case? Suppose I am trying my best to. 
see things as a non separation yes as fast as possible yes then am i a selfish person yes which is great <laughs> why because it shows the honestness it shows the honestness because why one has seen enough of life that now i know that that is not really the end game of life when one has seen enough one questions everything so why not you can call it being selfish why not but it shows deep down an earnestness but the honestness requires an impact on daily living not an intellectual earnestness so i may get the theory of a whole teaching and yet my relationships are exactly the same what they were 2 years ago then the teaching is not being lived so being selfish by all means but is that impacting the daily life how do i know that by the degree of peace that you feel if you look at any relationships in your life that are troubling you and you see them in the light of this new understanding if you feel more peaceful when you accept people for who they are that i don't like this person but now i see that this person is behaving as per their conditioning their genetics which god made then that sting in that relationship is removed because you accept that this person is the way they are made i am the way i am made and sometimes you'll be surprised compassion may arise that you know this person like i'll tell you i had a client who uh, his son in law was taking over his business and this son in law was feared by the entire office he was shouting loudly he would abuse the secretaries would tremble i had no nothing to do with the son in law i was meeting the boss but i actually one day thought that this man has so much venom inside against people that he must be really suffering to have that kind of stuff inside you and i found compassion arising for him not how dare he treat people like that who does he think he is that is okay and i felt my god to to behave like this how much he must be suffering unconsciously so there are some who are brought on to the journey others it's not their time their time is already destined whenever it is meant to happen it will happen so we are concerned with us not with the others so one person in your life may still hate you but you will not hate that person with the understanding you it doesn't mean you will love that person but you will have an understanding that this person is an instrument of the same divine force now what happens i don't hate him anymore i don't get along with him i go my way i let him go his way i am at peace so the measure is peace that is the one and only measure Almost, I'm reading uh, the Ramesh, the Sahara Dawn, your literature. So, why I feel, I mean, okay, very 
I do feel a certain degree of peace of mind. But why it is not complete or I am in the in the process? I mean, how do I explain myself? This thing? I feel sometimes a little bit angry with that. <laughs> <laughs> but still, things are not sorted out properly. Yes. I think the dilemma is still there. Yes. So the thing is that the ego wants to now take control of the journey which it didn't start in the first place. You see, it was your destiny to be exposed to Ramesh's teachings and they impacted you in a certain way. It was truly not in your control. But perhaps it gave you a taste of something which you really liked and so now you want it fully. That is what happens. You see. But if you live day by day, day by day, each day as it comes, as it presents itself, are you in opposition to the day and what happened in the day or are you accepting what happened in the day? Day by day, forget a future goal, forget trying to make things happen faster, just looking at all right, these things happened. Maybe 10 years ago, this is what I would have thought and felt. Today, this is how I think and feel. My reaction 10 years ago, what would have it led to? Now, what it is leading to? And if you find even a slight difference in your temperament, in your attitude, in your approach, compared with earlier, then the teaching is doing its job. But we have to give up that compulsion that the ego has to try and force an outcome sooner than it is destined. Or you may find some other teaching that appeals to you and pushes you further on the path. Even that is possible. But the end result is, because I always this, get this question, people are watching so many YouTube videos of different teachers, you know, in this quest, this earnest quest. And my answer is the same. Pick the one where you feel more at peace with. As a criteria, supposing you have 10 videos lined up to watch. Watch them. And then go back to that one where you feel yeah, here there is something which is drawing me and follow that. That is why Maharaj said that you get water not by digging many shallow wells all over the land but one deep well. But many of us all our lives we just keep digging shallow wells till we die. Because we are in a hurry. Last two years, I have looked for lesser options. You know, I used to read a lot also. Gradually, after meeting Ramesh, that zeroed out. I'm no, no more buying so many you know books, of so many different different teachers. That's stood basically. Um, that, was that first day when I read the book, that was the religion. Hmm. You know, and then I took, I bought it from Ramesh, you know, the rupees. Hmm. Took a train from BT and got down. By the time I got down from BT, I had finished the book. It's a very small book. Yes. And uh, I mean, you know, it arrested my thinking right. literally to one box. Because there is no other room to run away. Beautiful. It was because he answered in that so nicely, I mean, appropriately. Hmm. Gave no room for the many doubts. So that. Was first, so that's after that. I'm not reading much. 
Good. Yeah. Your life is yeah. simple then. Uh, yeah. Very, very <laughs> but this skirmishes that take place. It's called the flip me. flop. <laughs> it's there's a word for it, the flip flop. There's a whole phase called the flip flop because the ego is stuck between the old and new conditioning. That takes time. But you would say that compared with 12 years ago and today, do you feel generally a deeper sense of peace and your daily living has got a certain flavor to it now? So that is your answer. The problem is the one who wants to make it happen faster. <laughs> but even after reading or understanding, you know, sometimes such a, such a moment comes, you go uncontrollable. Sure. And then Very true. Deep fried into yes. problems. Yes. And although I know in all those teachings, I try to reiterate in my mind, but nothing helps. Yes. In those weeks or so, I simply keep on suffering. Yes. And nothing comes to my head. <laughs> <laughs> that will happen till it's supposed to happen. <laughs> but you can laugh at it. You know, you can say, in spite of my best intentions, I couldn't control myself. At the end of it, you can see how things happen. You know, Ramna Maharshi actually said to someone, and I read it in that book, Ramana Periya Perunam, that actually nobody can even tell a lie. It is the force which makes that person tell a lie. He's actually, I've underlined that. Nobody can actually tell a lie. It is that force through which the lie is told. What does that mean? That means pointing a finger, blaming someone is in the larger scheme of things irrelevant. Because it is that one force which is responsible for everything. One starts living through that prism. So what happens, Prasanna, this fear of losing the brother is offered at the feet of the source that you created this fear in me, I didn't. Now you help me deal with it in the best way possible. So the me, the ego now surrenders that fear also as not my fear, which I want to get rid of, but as this fear which is arising, I didn't create it, so I'm offering it at your feet. That is called surrender. If I created it, I could stop it. The fact that I can't stop it means I didn't create it. You created life situations, circumstances, you gave me a brother who I depended on. You as the source 
presented me with this situation and now as a result of this situation fear has started arising is it my fear you also created the fear that is the true surrender I'm glad you sent that question because we all have parents, siblings and it's such a real thing to discuss. Some of us have faced loss early in life like I lost my father when I was 14 so my exploration of loss began at that age unconsciously of course but it did begin. Some have lost their spouse, some have lost children. It's a design of life. That is why the Buddha told that lady who had got her dead son to make him alive and he said, find me one house in which there is no death, then I'll make him alive. And she went house to house. And in each house they knew someone or the other who had died. And she realized that this is life. And all this is easier said than done, I know it. Because I've had first-hand experience. Until you walk through the fire, and the person walking through the fire knew, knows how real it is. But even that is witnessed. <laughs> 